Joined by Tony Jones here on the Question Blog Talk Radio Conversation. Tony, welcome aboard to our little uh, conversation. Steve Sherber is going to stay here in studio uh, with us and try to uh, uh, chat with you a little bit. So uh, welcome aboard, my friend. Yo. Yodely, yodely. Hey, I think we got things figured out where you should be able to talk and not be bothered by that echo. Really? I think so. You know, always making new every week. Always making little improvements. Innovation every week. Yeah, and we believe, I believe, I believe this is true that um, that uh, uh, we're gonna have video on the blog talk radio side very, very soon. Oh, nice. Yeah. So that's gonna make. Then I will have to come start getting into the studio. (laughs) Yes, you are. Uh, so, uh, what are we going to talk about in the world of religion today? Uh, it's been pretty quiet. Uh, it's been pretty quiet around the religion world recently. Here, I, here I in Lake Wobegon, the spirits are asleep. Really quiet. But you know, the Pope, uh, the Pope went to Israel. Yeah, did you I hear heard. about that? I did. I just don't get it. <laughs> Seriously, the guy. Uh, went to Israel and people got all torqued off because first of all I still don't really understand and it's just because I'm not part of I, I've never been a part of a hierarchical religious system so I don't really get how one person is seen as the spokesperson for yeah. I think but 1.3 billion people in the world consider themselves Catholic and mm-hmm. this one 80 year old German dude speaks for all of them so he goes to Israel and he goes to Yad Vashem the Holocaust uh, the the very very famous um, and disturbing Yad Vashem um, is the the museum the Holocaust museum there in, in Jerusalem and he goes to the door but he won't go in and he won't go in because Pope, you can probably look it up on Wikipedia right now, the Pope Paul the Twelfth, maybe, who basically said um, that he wouldn't do anything to stop the spread of Nazism in Europe. He he's depicted negatively within that museum. Oh, I see. And so because he's taking one care of his peeps Pope's in there, huh? predecessors in his popedom did, you know, did, basically did something incongruous with the gospel, which was not stand up to the rise of fascism and Nazism in Europe, and, and, and basically look the other way during the extermination of Jews and homosexuals and others. So he's depicted negatively because there's historical facts that shows that that's how he... That's how that pope responded at the time. But because they tell the truth about that in their museum, this pope won't go inside. Huh. Yeah. So it causes an even, you know, it, it continues it just the rift going on, right? Right. Christians and Jews, and now mm-hmm. at this point, like they're trying to make atheists because, out of all of us, aren't they? Be, yeah, because like because this pope won't do it. It 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 keeps. It, it, I don't know that it broadens the rift, but it definitely keeps the chasm in place. And I got to tell you, I don't think there are a lot of Jews who probably see that. Maybe, maybe I'm wrong about this, but it, it seems that that casts a disturbing shadow over all Christians, myself included, not just Catholics. Oh, when for he sure. refuses to go inside the museum. For sure, because for ins- because insiders in any religious system always understand the differentiation to a level that outsiders couldn't possibly understand that. So in Christianity, we, we can recognize, oh, well, that's a different stream or that's a different uh, approach or that's a different community. But we, we don't tend to do that with Jewish communities. We don't tend to do that with Muslim communities, you know, understand these these intricacies of, right. of, uh, of different right. different communities. It's... It's one and for all, and that's the uh, that's the struggle for those of us who try to have a competing public expression of of the story of God. Is that you're you are intrinsically wrapped up with other with other expressions 
um, you know, uh, explanations. Yeah. And what's so interesting to me is, I guess this is what what um, is bred. The bigger the bureaucracy is, it seems to me, and the more hierarchical it is, the more difficult it is for that bureaucracy to admit its past failings. Yeah. So it took until Vatican II in the mid-1960s for the Catholic Church, which, of course, it's not the Catholic Church. There weren't right. there weren't a billion people at that meeting. There were a bunch of you know cardinals and bishops at that meeting who spoke for all these people. Mm-hmm. And these cardinals and bishops, of course, are not elected democratically. They're appointed politically. Yeah, by by so others the, in their same race, class. Right? How much they really, how much they really actually do. I mean, they speak for. They speak for Catholics in about the same way that uh, Queen Elizabeth speaks for Britain, you know? Yeah. She didn't. She wasn't elected to be queen. She was queen because of what family she happened to be born into. So, okay, so they all decide that they're going to take the line out of the mass about, you know, the Jews being basically the murderers of Christ and uh, <laughs> right. like look we're willing to change let's drop that <laughs> like 1900 years later they dropped that right yeah. well I mean it wasn't in the mass for that long but okay so but my point is that it takes long and it's so difficult in these systems to admit any kind of mistake mm-hmm. and why couldn't a pope walk in there and go yeah you know what <laughs> The Pope during World War II blew it. I'll, I'll, I'll be on, let's be honest about this. Like, really, I wish we would have stood up to Nazism. And I really wish that those popes in the Middle Ages wouldn't have had kids and, you know, then had their bastard children uh, be appointed arch- archbishops <laughs> and the Holy Roman Emperor. And, you know, like, yeah, you're right. There was a time in history when there were three popes yeah. running around Europe, and they, were, they yeah. each had an army, and they each claimed to be the real pope. Like, when you read the official Catholic um, histories, there's, they don't talk about that. Now, I, I don't want some people to think I'm on some tirade against Catholicism at all. Because no, you're on a tirade against all institutionalized religious expressions, not just the Catholic. Yeah, because it's sort of <laughs> like, let's say you go to Notre Dame and you take a don't course. Don't misunderstand. It's not just the Catholics. No, exactly. Like if you go to if you go to Notre Dame and take a history a church history class from a Jesuit, he's going to tell you the truth. Like it, it's not, yeah. it's not like Catholic universities like teach right. all history. It's just that the Catholic magisterium they have they have they have an official history that is at odds with the facts of what happened and right. what's interesting like hey, hey tony we're gonna i'm just gonna have you hold that thought because we're gonna uh, we're gonna save the break? video for we're gonna save right. the video for youtube and take a little break here and then we're gonna be right back this is blog talk radio okay. conversation with doug Paget and tony jones talking about religion and we're gonna be back uh for the uh 12th installment i think of the show here in a minute so if you're listening on blog talk radio just keep listening if you're watching on Ustream, just keep watching news brought to you by the onion radio network <laughs> 